okay i think we have everyone so we can start with right okay great yes, so yes. Uh, sachin uh, maybe if you can like, start with your introduction and give us a little bit like the the background like what you have done so far including your education guys i have like a chat with you for like a few minutes but we have chetan and nikhil so maybe you can just like a talk about yourself right so am i going to be yes yes, yes. all right so my name is sachin saxena i did my btech from xy tech dehradun uh, then i did my mtech degree from tit dehradun itself so recently i am aws trainer uh, uh, amazon web service trainer at uh, abes gajabad it's near by greater noida and before that i was teaching data science and machine learning python in previous engineering colleges and having experience in different edutech companies like adinoc bangalore and adu adinoc bangalore and codingal bangalore again and having freelancing work for different different clients like from uh, usa uk and uh, having experience in uh, power bi tableau and advanced sql and uh, having computer vision knowledge and uh, deep learning recently published a research paper on deep learning conducting my own algorithm and uh, having the basic uh, data set and uh, um, means uploading and uh, means uh, holding and deployment of the data set on the cloud level and so on so recently i am uh, learning aws i would say i will, i am i'm not very pro in aws but i am learning day by day so recently i am working on ec2 and how to conduct uh, the uh, uh, virtual private network and so on okay okay so i think uh, then after your graduation you started with the institute uh, uh maybe like a to educate on certain like areas right yes so mainly your exposures exposures are like with with the like students or with the institute or you like teaching on some of the like a subject right yes uh, i have okay. uh, as of now i have taught uh, five engineering colleges for last 12 years mm mm-hmm, mm mm-hmm. okay now uh, if we start with uh, maybe on the ml side uh how much like experience you got on the ml like do you know like some of the algorithms or like have you used uh, ml into some of the project or yes. it is like more on the theoretical part yes i have used few machine learning algorithms and performed so many uh, means real projects also and submitted on uh, on the same mm mm-hmm. okay any any like a specific project you want to talk about uh, why do you feel like it really it was uh, very uh, very complex and you solved and you were like able to come up with really good or the efficient model with the good efficacy yes so i have worked on deep learning algorithm and compared with the conventional machine learning algorithm so uh, uh, what are these algorithm these are binary classification and on the basis of binary classification uh, i have used uh, logistic regression support vector machine decision tree and other means uh, linear regression need not linear regression but uh, other uh, classification problems also so uh, algorithm then i move to the advanced machine learning or i would say deep learning transfer learning and deep learning consists vgg16 vgg19 and i have collected data set from nearby mri uh, centers so this data i have not this is image data set and image data set is is kind of is the having the uh, extension of dicom and uh, re- i have collected in my pen drive so they were not allowed to uh, connect their pen drive or any device to their Uh, means to to one crore rupees machine and very high costly machine. So as far as their uh, conversation of the data is concerned, they are uh, having DVD concept. So I just used to pick my DVDs and just copy the data. So it took around one month. So I have not downloaded any data from Kaggle 
or any uh, means uh, github or any other data source website but i have collected my own data set for a research point of view so what i did with this data set this is the data set of a stomach patient so this is these stomach patients are suffering from uh, brain means tumor suffering from cancer symptom suffering from kidney diseases suffering from healthy uh, no diseases there so my algorithm is to find out or to classify their class whether this image is belonging to cancer patient this image is belonging to uh, a healthy patient this image is belong to uh, means like uh, a tumor patient and stone patient and so on so for that what i have done i have just prune and data processing part includes the conversion of dicom image into jpg format so i had a python code which which compile entire 8 gb code means a data set so it 8 gb data set it was in means ingredient in a single folder and it has 18000 images so 18000 images were converted into image format and that means jpg format because originally or the raw data was in the dicom image which is the mri ct scan x ray would be conduct on their machine then after the conversion of jpg i just convert it into numpy array and then take as a neural network inputs and to the support vector inputs or whatever the inputs is there so i segregate my data into 80% for training 10% for testing and 10% for validation part so accuracy was near about 97% for sbm near about 96% for uh, logistic regression i would say and very very high accuracy i got in deep learning algorithm that is machine i mean uh, 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 transfer learning so that 18000 data like the image what you are talking about that is from how many patients uh, it's around uh, i think 30 to 35 candy, uh, patients were there from my nearby city bareilly city and three hospitals were there one is srms hospital second is uh, bareilly mri center and third one is mission hospital and from these hospitals i collected data sent in a dvd and it is around 30 to 35 patients so then total 35 data points you got and you got multiple image for those 35 patients right yes now what what like you consider as like your your like the data points for the model you consider that 35s data points for the model or you have considered those like 18000 uh, the image data points as like your your model input Uh, I mean, because eighteen uh, thousand images are all not are uh, concluding the kidney. Because my aim was to find out the kidney images. Some of them are having kidney images. Some of them are not having kidney images. So, so I'll have to prune few images. I uh, mean, like in the data pre-processing part, because the image which is not having kidney portion that is irrelevant for my data set. so as far as etl process is concerned i just prune all these images and keeping all these images those are having kidney images only because my aim is to find out stone cancer and tumor in kidney only not inside the entire stomach but kidney only for that i have just taken all means the the jpg format into the input means these are my images in images my are my inputs not the patients okay now what other attributes you have considered into that model it is like only based on the image or did you consider any features from the patient details or any other like information yes so i had taken the uh, first and second uh, Um, maybe it's advice from the radiologist so because radiologist can only differentiate these images and their uh, means their reports actual reports so um, uh, means by attaching all these reports 
means whether actually this uh, this this patient is having kidney uh, stone or not so i have taken first decision from the radiologist then i talk to nephrologist nephrologist the doctor who is taking care of the kidney also kidney only like pediatric those are taking care of children similarly nephrologist those are taking care of kidney only so i just uh, a doctor sunil is there so i just take the advice from doc, uh, dr sunil that he is mbbs md and uh, he suggested that uh, you are supposed to segregate all these four classes like kidney stone cancer and healthy so on the basis of these four classes you just you just keep segregated all these images four images then i pre process the data on the basis of their like what is their history like if they are suffering any sugar point if they are ha having any bp control or not so that is in the csv format so that do you it. think that like this 30 35 uh, data points was good enough because if i really think about your problem you have like 18000 images but from there hardly you will get maybe like a couple of like a cases with like a kidney problem or a couple of cases only with the cancer and so on so there may be like a very limited number of images which will be like a telling you with the like these problems now now you have mentioned that you have consulted with like a doctor now doctor they help you to label the data and then help you to flag whether it is a the have having the disease yes or no or they're helping you to get some of the features to include into your model yes i do i i do agree from your first point I, as far as deep learning is concerned it's a very small data set and i'm going to extend uh, in future also so uh, I I hundred percent agree. This is very small data set for uh, for kidney image it means for deep learning aspect and machine learning point of view. And second point, uh, I have taken supervised learning from expert that is my doctor Sunil MBBS MD. So he just helped me out to segregate or to label the images. But I am two hundred percent agree that it is very small. Uh, uh location for the deep learning inputs as far as neural network inputs are concerned they required very heterogeneous kind of data i do agree and in future i am going to this is my first term and this was very small uh, uh amy's project i would say because for that my aim was to conduct my own activation functions also like how to uh, not to take the conventional like sigmoid and uh, uh relu lo or activation functions i have taken my own activation function and test the results also then secondly i am aiming to find the uh, diaptic uh, means mellitus on the kidney so that is my image segmentation uh, project so i am going to extend the same project into the image annotation so what is image annotation i am having already image uh, means diaptic mellitus uh, terms in a different data set that i don't have but i will download from a resource so th for the for with the help of this image annotation part i'll train the same data set and will try to annotate the image so that's that is my uh, next project next advanced level of this okay uh, uh, chetan over to you yeah yeah, have... yeah yeah so uh, since you're like what's your total experience and then uh, do you have any industry experience apart from uh, i can see like most of them you have uh, mentioned as a tutor uh, this thing so let me know like Total experience and what's your industry experience? Uh, my teaching experience is 12 years and uh, as a freelancer I have worked for few projects that cannot uh, means cannot be say as a uh, means corporate project. Few uh, a few Bangalore based company that is Codingal and Adunek that again uh, means tutor as a Python and data science tutor. But I don't have any uh, very transparent. I don't have any corporate or IT sector experience as of now. Okay, so uh, so in data science tutor in uh, uh, like uh, tutor right? So like what all things you used to just answer keep it. Uh, so we have less time, so just keep the answer short. Like what all things you used to teach in the data science? In data science, first we had explored the statistics, mathematics behind the statistics. What is normal distribution? What is G test? What is T test? What is the 
different uh, architectures why do we read statistics in a data science then we have different kind of uh, uh, like uh, sql query for that i had used sqlite 3 so i had used spark also and then i had worked on machine learning projects like how to prove the uh, means how to classify the uh, credit card fraud how to uh, perform the uh, means uh, linear regression on the certain uh, means uh, price of the any uh, sales and distribution and then the time series data set so few projects were there they they had their own curriculum and we had to teach explain everything using hands-on practice so i had hands-on practice for the candidates these candidates were from usa uk so late in night night i had uh, means classes so these were statistic concepts for logistic regression and so on okay so what are the tools and uh, uh, languages uh, we have used like tools in the sense like visualization maybe tableau or power bi so like and, and so any python specific package and the tool set what are the tool what are, uh, what are in case? that company or what i know so whatever you know like so not non specific uh, yes. companies so like whatever I, tool set. I know yeah. i know tableau i know power bi i have implemented python code on power bi i have connected sql server in power bi and tableau both and uh, obviously matplot and PySpark are uh, having data visualization tool but most of the times uh, uh, i have done projects on power bi and tableau okay uh fine from your okay let's have a few uh, 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 simple questions on the machine learning part so uh, you are telling that you're deep learning right so have you, you are uh, you also worked on the the machine learning part not the deep learning i'm talking about the machine learning like linear regression svm recent have you worked on those things have you knowledge yes okay. i have uh, so did you with what kind of data sets you have used did you use it from something kaggle or some real world data set something or so like a data set which are available in the you know circuit lab or the seaborn libraries which what kind of data sets you have used so I have used so many data sets like it is uh, from uh, like uh, price uh, uh, means any house price prediction. So this is CSV data set which I downloaded from Kaggle. Sometimes I use uh, uh, the uh, diabetic patients data set which is uh, downloaded from Indian diabetic patient website and that is having 16 features. One is target value that is again CSV data set. Okay, don't go to the no, no, just don't go to the like what okay. kind of feature. Just okay. like I'm just looking at like what kind of uh, and second and that. third kind of data I had Google form and uh, having survey kind of from different so many uh, uh, patients uh, all over all across the country all across the uh, UP and uh, New Delhi and CR region and uh, converted this Google form into the Excel sheet and then say Excel sheet converted into the me uh, CSV file or data frame using pandas. So let's a uh, couple of questions. So if you have a class imbalance, like if you are working on a classification problem, you have 95, maybe fraud detection. So you have, I think, almost 98% you have non-fraud and the remaining 2% or maybe less than 1%. Here. So how do you deal with uh, such kind of data when you're building a model? Yes. So I'll perform data augmentation for the same. So I'll uh, segregate the data into the same format and the normalize perform the normalization or t normalization for the uh, for the uh, uh, for, for both these classes so that i can have the balanced data set for yes and no both normalization how it will balance the data set i didn't understand like you 99 percent of your data is one class and the remaining is another class so normalization how it will normalize the data how it will uh, balance the data set uh, it will not, uh, as such, it will not balance the data set as an output, but it will uh, means, uh, means give the uh, means glimpse of the data set, whether it is 95% data is rounding around the average part or not. So if it have having 95% uh, rotating about the average data set, so I would say, okay, it is fine. It will not have left SQ or right SQ and I'll go to the best. So uh, although it, it will not be very important to play a role into the uh, data augmentation. Okay, how will you evaluate the model? You okay, have a imbalanced data, right? So, so what, 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 what would be your evaluation 
metric or criterion probably valid yes so there are so many parameters like accuracy is there and uh, uh, the uh, performance measure is there f1 score is there and uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, this one confusion matrix is there then we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, specificity is there and is uh, specificity and the uh, is, uh, one more is there uh, is uh, specific and uh, that is sensitivity the sensitivity, yeah. sensitivity mm -hmm. is there and they all these formulae are rotating around, around false positive false negative true positive true negative uh, my such my question is like specific to one scenario if, if you have an imbalance then how do you evaluate okay like which which metric you will use okay and why okay so for that i'll use uh, uh okay so um, i can't recall now i have studied but can't recall now uh so can you talk about what is bias variance data bias bias variance bias what is bias variance trade off it personally by variant variance you bias say. bias and variance okay bias variance okay so when we are having uh, the data set uh, which is which is having uh, uh, means uh, uh, more uh, variance uh, which is having more variance means uh, having uh, far values from the average means from uh, from the mean value so that is having large variance so it is having large value because in variance we are subtracting each data point from the mean value and the we are having large variance which means it is rotating around if it, it is not rotating around the mean value if we are having low variance which means it is having a uh, very low variance means it, it is not having very uh, I mean large scale or very having a large value around the mean value so that is various bias we are having bias towards the certain elements certain features if it is having low bias we would say it is tend towards it is not uh, uh, means moving towards the target data set it is having far from uh, from the uh, given target values so uh, we we must have the low okay. values Fine. so can you uh, talk about like how uh all right, maybe tell me about like assumption for linear regression yes so linear regression first and foremost it must have the uh, ba basic y is equal to mx plus c it must have linear equation not the quadratic or any polynomial definition second one it is having uh, means uh, uh, means balanced data set and having uh, all the features are filled like no no one should have the uh, means empty or any other uh, means non, non, non values are there inside the data set so the third one it must have the um, like uh, uh, means linear pattern that i have counted and uh, variance should be there means like variance should have a large value so there are three or four uh, certain conditions so few are remaining two are remaining and two i have included okay uh so what is feature scaling when, when when it is needed do you need for all the machine learning algorithms like a linear regression logistic svm random forest or any other boosting or bagging models do you need what is yeah what is feature scaling do you need when you need it when we are uh, processing upon machine learning algorithm we are needing features but when we are moving towards deep learning algorithm as, as of now we don't need features okay which is auto automatically segmented by the deep learning algorithm no so, no no question okay. is feature scaling like okay, uh, min scaling min ma yeah yes, min okay. max scalar max okay. max absolute scalar okay. something okay. okay so in feature scaling we have suppose the data set uh, my aim age is 15 to 18 years old and my temperature suppose second feature is having temperature uh, i mean 30 degree 40 degree and all these features are having different range so in order to process to the machine learning algorithm we will have to combine or we will have to accommodate within the same range that is 0 and 1 so in that we will have to scale the entire features or entire columns in a single frame i mean single frame of uh, range value minimum and maximum value suppose we are having minimum maximum so in that case we will have to scale in a minimum and maximum value so that we can remove outlier from the same so that is the scaling and the other parts we can convert the entire data need, 
Yeah, that's fine. So, like, you want to bring it to the same scale, yes. right? So, you told zero and one. So, it's always zero and one because I don't, I don't want zero and I want minus five and plus five or maybe minus three and plus yes. three. Can I make it? Yeah. Yes, I can do. And uh, for okay. that, we can have certain value and minimax is there. Respective minimum value and respective maximum value will have the minimum and maximum value of this range, irrespective of the zero and one. Okay, I have a data set which has a lot of outliers, like both on both ends. So, can I still use min? Can I use min max color? Uh, no. Can uh, can min? Uh, no. Which one will use? For that, I'll use PCA algorithm first and TSNE also. So PCA will 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 remove or will find out all these uh, uh, columns. Those are having those are playing large. Important tools and dependency on the target. Value. No, no, I, oh. no, no, I was telling just one feature okay. with the uh, uh, outliers, lot of outliers. Outlet. Can so, I use minmax scalar mm, or which no. one you which one you recommend? Which which uh, which standardization or the normalization you suggest? So I'll use the uh, standardization. So that is having standard value of the data set because in that I'll have the uh, box plot. And the box plot will have the first quartile and the fourth quartile values around these values, around these range. So I cannot use minimum and maximum value in that case. Okay, so this, fine. Yeah. So case, it will include outliers also. Okay, fine. So a couple of few uh, questions on Python. Okay, so have you heard uh, a star arc star keyword argument? Argument and keyword argument like star arcs and star star KW arcs. Yes. So when we need to acquire all these parameters in a single node, in a single uh, arguments, then we use asterisk and we are going to pass the entire set of elements into a uh, list. And this list is going to this, these least elements are going to pass to the function value. Then we are going to use asterisk or comment uh, or ORGS. Then we are having again asterisk, again asterisk. So uh, then it will call the second time or it, it will inherit the uh, uh, means uh, value of the uh, next list. So I, I'm unclear at this at this time. Okay, so for double asterisk. Can you, yes, can you tell me the important difference between uh, uh, list and tuple? Yes. Main main differences. So list is uh, 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 means mutable and tuple is mutable. List is having order. Uh, kind of order is set and tuple is having means list is not having order kind of problem and tuple is not order so suppose i will have list one is equal to abc list two is equal to cba and will compare these two lists it will give true because it's not focusing on the order of these two lists but in the same case if i will compare two tuples with the same set of elements it won't give true it will give false in that case third a point it is list is having square bracket and tuple is having round brackets for uh, uh, for the difference is uh, we cannot we cannot give list as a key to the dictionary rather we can give uh, me uh, uh, this, this one uh, uh, tuples to uh, as a key to the dictionary point of view because in dictionary keys are immutable and we had such kind of data set uh, which is not immutable uh, as compared to key so we are having keys as a uh, in a dictionary uh, for the uh, this one uh, tuple uh, sets are uh, i'll tell you like uh, data type tell me whether it is mutable or immutable sets or sets sets are uh, uh, immutable i think dictionary dictionaries dictionaries are uh, uh, mutable we can we can change the values of text or remove it. So have you used the classes and objects like when you're coding in Python? So do you use class? Yes. Do, do you know what are dunder like double underscore function? Dunder they call that double underscore like uh, underscore underscore init underscore like when you create a okay class. In, in it, what is that? Init. Yeah, in it, yeah. In okay. It, yeah. So init is going to initialize my parameter. It is the self. Uh, argument which is having the all the features which is defined inside the function and inside the uh, class we can have the any parameter which is have which is acquiring all these functions all these arguments and all these 
uh, function values that we can have in it one more point one more important uh, aspect of this in it it will initialize the function values or the call whenever we will call the uh, class from outer body or any other uh, part so that is called uh, double underscore in it and double underscore the one last question so what is we use self here in, in the class definition and also what is self so it's not mandatory we are using self but however it is suggested to use self to define the same features at me same arguments within the function when we are having a uh, uh, first function or first or uh, no, uh, question is what self indicates what is this why we have to write it uh, it's going to uh, inherit it's going to uh, assign the parameters of the function like self dot length is equal to one self dot uh, 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 breadth is equal to two so we can have oh. the same arguments we cannot uh, okay. we are not required to give the any third variable or assign any third, third variable yeah so yeah uh, that's all and if from aws what it was like what are things you are learning on the you already know that you're still learning or you already know the uh, yes, uh, as of now, I have worked on SageMaker, I have worked on S3, same, same, uh, and I have worked on Elastic Computing uh, uh, model, and I have worked, I have created virtual private network, and how to deploy machine learning models and the uh, machine learning pipelining on the machine, uh, AWS that I am learning, how to create DevOps and MLOps. So that is my upcoming days, I will learn. But as of now, I have introduced to SageMaker and implemented uh, these projects which I have discussed in, in few minutes. I have deployed few projects on SageMaker also. Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Ajit. So we that's have, all from my we side. Have, we have the, tied up with the AWS NOIDA mm -hmm. recently. Uh, Amazon have given the credentials for the same for AWS. So that we, we are not supposed to give the uh, credit card details to uh, AWS console. Okay. Thanks. That's all from my side, Devo. Uh, anything? So, Sachin, one like a question, like I see, definitely you are like a involved with uh, maybe multiple things. Multiple things means uh, you are like a doing freelancing, you are like a teaching, and then uh, you are like a involved with uh, maybe in the past multiple institutes and so on. Now, what is your like a career vision? If you want, means you do you want to grow? with all those like a dimension or you want to really focus to build your career in the in the like a corporate uh, world as a like maybe data scientist or you want to like a grow as a uh, the research scholar who is like a looking into so many other like a aspect along with that your your like a, this new role what you were like expecting for yes so my answer is so by the grace of god i am going to uh, means the aim was to move to the it department it company and industrial corporate uh, world so uh, i just start teaching in order to boost in order to uh, rejuvenate my coding hands-on practice that was uh, my aim so gradually i was pro in the bootstrap html so many languages then i left these uh, made these uh, uh, companies and then i focus on my full-time job that is assistant professor in jimmy colleges but all among all these jobs one thing is common that is python and i'm going i'm going to see my future as a data scientist or machine learning le, machine engineer or uh, data uh, engineer in it industry and my aim is to become uh, for the same profile i'm preparing for the same profile for very long time since corona one corona two i was preparing for the same and same Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Sachin, for your time. Uh, do you have any any question for us? Uh, yes. Any further round after this? Yeah. So uh, that depends. Like, a, uh, we'll like a get together and we'll like a discuss about the feedback of this particular session. And if it is required, then we may have like one technical round uh, where you can like work on some of the like a live like a like the the assignment. Or maybe if you like a fine, then we can go for like a the next like the final round, uh, which will be like a HR round. That depends on like a, what is the final like output of this particular session. Okay, so before that round, I'll have I, I will be assigned a project. 
Uh, it may. So but okay. it depends on the game. Let's say if like a panelist are like very much like convinced with like a two day session, then fine. We may like skip that one. But if we have like a doubt or if we are really not comfortable with, then definitely either it will lead to like a next like a technical round or it may be like a no round and we'll be like a call of closing like a after this session. Right. So my 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 question is the assignment will be given in the same uh, session. Yes. Yes. Okay. The technique in the technical technical session. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thanks, Sachin. Bye. 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 Bye.